Welcome to the Expectant Knitter Podcast. I'm your host, Steph, and this is week 33. Comfortable? <laughs> uh, this is a podcast about knitting and pregnancy. It is week 33 because I am 33 weeks along and seven away from my due date. Holy cow. <laughs> Let's jump right into what's going on in my knitting world. Um, first up, let me find my bag. Well, first up, let me apologize for being disoriented and late. Um, this week, this week, yesterday, my darling dear husband um, was out for a run, tripped over the yellow line in the road or something, and fell tearing his ACL in his shoulder. Um, very, very painful. Uh, spent the afternoon in the emergency room, and came. I brought him home last night, and it's basically me running and getting him whatever he needs while we wait to see an orthopedic surgeon to find out if it needs to be surgically reattached. Oh! <laughs> well there, now <laughs> you know what it is it looks like. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on with that. Oh my god, my poor stupid cat. Yeah, uh, she is such a simple cat, she really is. The other two never cause problems, it's always her. Always her. But I think she's going to be all set sitting behind the camera. So, he has taken over the living room because, you know, he's in a sling and he can't move. Um, and any, like, a step on the stairs makes him wince with pain. So, he's in the living room, so I'm recording not there. <laughs> but anyways. Um, so, first up on the knitting front. Um, these are, God, you, it's serious. Hi. <laughs> Take two. So, what's going on in my knitting world? Um, first up, I actually, oh, hold, uh, I, oof, okay. So, in between recording that first bit, and now, I took Steve to, my stitches fell off the needle, so please, please bear with me one minute while I pick them back up, because that drives me insane. Um, so I took Steve to see the orthopedic surgeon, who, or the orthopedic doctor specialist, who saw him and said, torn ligaments, for sure, um, six weeks for recovery, and the doctor promised me that Steve will, in fact, hold the baby at delivery and not to worry about that. So, whew, huge relief, huge weight off my shoulders knowing that he's going to be capacitated. He won't be incapacitated <laughs> when the baby arrives. So, um, so that's great news. Okay, now, knitting. I just have to pick up two more stitches here. So I was waiting in the waiting room. I was waiting in the doctor's office with him, knitting away, knitting, knitting, knitting. And then the doctor came in, and so I just threw my knitting in the bag, this, and clearly, something got pulled, and a bunch of stitches fell off. But now they're perfect. They're all in line again. So all, all is good. So, this is a just plain 6x2 rib sock. I'm using Opal Rainforest. Um, in the Eugenie colorway. Duchess Herzogin. Eugenie, um, and I'm knitting on size 1.5 to 0.5 millimeter needles, and I have to say, okay, here, close up. I love self-striping yarn. It's so nice. Um, yeah, I did about an inch and a half in that doctor's office, but, um, I just love going in circles, going in circles, and knitting self-striping yarn. It's so exciting to see the next color start and 
while I'm not really wild about the oranges and the red quality of this yarn, I don't know, it's just something about it. Maybe it's the dark section here. I'm not wild about it. I don't dislike it. I like it enough to knit with it. Um, I don't know if I'll keep them or not. But anyways, um, they just make me happy. So these are on the needles and they're going along. They're my carry along socks. Um, so let's talk about the flamboyant for a second. I think I knit half a row. <laughs> Definitely not holding up my end of the knit two rows a day to get this thing done. And I'm not even going to take it out. So it's gotten to the point where it feels huge. And so it's like, oh, and it's hot. It was in the 90s multiple days this week. And when it's that warm, I don't want to be having a big knit object on my lap. So didn't really work on it, but hopefully I'll get some time in this weekend. So and it, I, it causes me to think a little more than I would like because one row is knit two purl one and then you come back so it's purl two knit one and I'm just half of I don't know if I I'm afraid if I let my brain go too much that I'll end up doing the wrong thing and wasting an hour on a row for something that has to be ripped out so um the sprout blanket I didn't even get that out um yeah, I think that texture is really bothering me because I haven't picked it back up. So we'll see if I carry on with it or not. Um, at this point, we're seven weeks out, feeling a little bit like, okay, if I'm going to finish knitting something for the baby between now and then, I need to get on it or else, right? Sorry, feeling a little parched. Um, so yeah, but that doesn't mean... I can't cast on new things because that's the mood I'm in. <laughs> so in addition to the pair of socks that I already just showed you, I cast on another pair. Um, last fall in November, we went on, uh, for my, it was actually for my birthday. Um, Steve and another couple, some really good friends of ours, um, we went up to the university where we Three of the four of us went to college and watched some hockey games, so that was a lot of fun. And there's a yarn shop up there that I have to go to whenever I'm near it. And um, I got some Fair Isle sock yarn. I think I've, I must have been knitting the socks in February when I started recording. But anyways, um, I cast on a pair of socks to show Steve what the like fake aisle um, striping would look like. And then I knit the socks for myself. They came out too small to fit him. Okay, maybe I, I made them too small on purpose, but they ended up being for me. And they were like a, a cream, a black, gray, brown colorway. So the other day I was in Michael's picking up buttons for the baby booties that I've been working on. And I popped over. No, I wasn't in Michael's. I was in Joanne's. I don't know if that makes a difference, but popped over and into the yarn section and saw Souls and More, Sensation Souls and More. It's a 75 wool, 25 nylon blend. And this is a black gray cream uh, self-striping yarn. Um, colorway is 1810 is the color number. Wow, and it says Joanne Stores. I wonder if it's their own brand of yarn. Made in Istanbul, Turkey. Gray shade soles and more. So, anyways, that's what this is. And, um, I think it was the last pair of socks I knit. I decided that I was going to start going down to size 1s. So I ordered some size 1s from Knit Picks instead of 1.5s. So these are size 1s. And that's the toe for Steve so far. I'm doing 72 stitches on a 4x4. So I thought I saw a mistake. Four by four rib. And again, just going in a circle and it makes me so happy. I really like how dense this fabric is. These are going to be super warm winter socks for him. Um, so yeah, US size one, 2.25 needles. And I think I'm going to call them a Christmas present and make that my goal to finish these by Christmas. We'll see how I do, but they look pretty good so far. I should try them on though, or he should try them on before I get any further. Just because I don't want to do 36, 72 stitches, 72 stitches. 
if it's not making a huge difference. I thought going down a needle size it might be warranted, but maybe it isn't. And I'm making him really wide socks and they're taking longer than I normally. It's normally in at 64 stitches for socks that will fit our feet. Our, we're like half a size difference. Half an inch difference in foot size. So it was pretty close between the two of us. Um, yeah. So that's what these are. And that's what's been traveling in my purse with me this week. Um, and then I cast on something else. <laughs> is, this, is this a symptom of pregnancy? Because I know last time I blamed it on a holiday weekend. Well, what's my excuse for this week? Um, since the... I do like baby blankets and they are very useful and... Well, I assume they're very useful, but um, they're versatile. So if I knit a baby blanket, it can use it for a year, whatever, as long as it's in a car seat, in a stroller, um, et cetera, et cetera, versus a sweater, which is as long as it fits into it, right? You all know this. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. And number two, if I knit a baby blanket and then find that I don't really need it because we already have two plus the one that my friend Lisa gave me, um, which I wanted to show you. So this is the baby blanket from Lisa, Wicked Pissa on Ravelry, um, that she made for us. It's very soft, and very fine. It's probably a, I'd say sport or DK weight. So she did a lot of work on this and it's very pretty. It's my mother's favorite blanket of all the baby blankets I have so far, including the ones I've knit. My mother. Anyways. Um, yeah, so I'm not wild about the sprout, and if I make a, another baby blanket, um, and we don't need this many, I'll give it as a shower gift. It's, you know, it's a great thing to have. So, I cast, I went looking, Knitter's Book of Yarn by Claire Parks has a pattern called <clears throat> the Patchwork Carriage Blanket. I hope you can see that. So, I um, I pulled out some of my, it's a color block. I am very scattered. Sorry, folks. There's a, another picture of it. So, just to give you an idea. It's a color block patchwork blanket. And she has it using, I believe, three colors. I wanted to use a few more and took it up to five colors. So, I am... Um, working on size 7, 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, it's knit in strips, and there are six strips, which feel remarkably like knitting a scarf, but it's okay. Um, I hate scarves. I'd much rather knit a cowl. You'll never see me knit a scarf. Ever, ever, ever. Okay, I knit like two when I first started, like very few scarves. Anyway, so I am using Cascade. See, it's all rolled up on itself. It doesn't look very exciting, does it? I know. I'm sorry. Well, if we do that, maybe you can see a little better. So the first one is a cable square, and that is Dream and Color Classy. And then there's a stockinette square with Cascade 220 Superwash paints, like the greens, teals colorway. And then there's a striped stockinette square where you stripe. And then there's another stockinette with Cascade 220. And then there's a seed stitch square that's German Color Classy again. So it's... Oh, and the last color on this is going to be Cascade 220. And it'll be a pink square. So pinks, blues, greens, yellows, purples. It's like a muted rainbow. It's definitely baby color. It definitely was maybe inspired <laughs> by the colors of this blanket. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm working on. I'm thinking next time, or the next strip I knit, I think I'll do two together and just cross the colors at the intersection. Two strips at a time. Not that I'm worried about sewing, and I'll still have the same number of ends to weave in. But, um... Going back and forth for such a short section is kind of, you're constantly turning, turning, turning. So, not wild about that.
and I think working on this gave me that sudden like oh, I love working on socks and going in a circle and just knitting and knitting and knitting <laughs> which is why I had to tell you that so uh, this is the baby blanket the latest and greatest that I'm working on um, no sock knitting this week no baby sock knitting this week today is actually the last day to finish um, so if you are working on a pair of booties Get them up, get them done, get them finished, get them posted. Don't forget to link or to tag them with the tag. I don't know what it is. Something expectant knitter, baby sock, knit along 2011. I don't know. It's at the top of the thread if you want to use the tag so that we can look at all of them together. And I will list it in the show notes on the blog. So, uh, finish them up. <laughs> I, it, I think last time, yeah, so if you, you know, just get them posted by this weekend and it will be good. And we will do a drawing from, at random for the, um, for finished projects. And I decided we're going to do a prize for most completed pairs and then, um, There'll be a couple other beautiful stitch markers, which you can see pictures of over on the Ravelry boards by Ad Knitter. Ad Knitter 1. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. All right, moving on to expectations. Week 33. So this week the baby is 19 inches long and weighs 4.5 pounds, thereabouts. So it is, in my head, I know lots of people who have had 19-inch babies like 19 to 21 inches so I'm thinking full grown and boy don't I feel it because we're having the samba sessions in my belly and like last night I was up from two until three because I was sleepy and tired but the baby was just like hey don't lay that way hey don't lay that way either hey are, are you comfortable because I'm not I need to just stretch and do this little like drumming over here and a little kicking over here it's very, it's amusing, but it gets very tiresome. Like, <laughs> and you're probably tired of listening to me talk about it. So I will try to zip it, but it is, it is interesting. And, you know, today I was thinking, it's week 33. Week 20, I was like, I haven't felt it yet. Am I going to feel it soon? Oh my God, I can't wait to feel it. And now I'm like sitting with a straight back at the edge of my desk at work with my legs <laughs> out in front of me trying to just be like, all right, baby, you have as much space as you possibly can have. Stop moving. Like get comfortable and stop. Because if I'm all like hunched and sitting there, it seems to be worse. And so... <laughs> That's me at work. That's me in meetings. I'm very funny to watch because I'll go from being like way reclined in a chair to suddenly sitting way up and just like, okay, here we go. Time for dance. So, <laughs> um, and of course, before his injury and his couch sleeping, or he's actually sleeping up, like sitting up, which is more comfortable for him. He's sleeping right now, in fact. <laughs> Uh, but before he was sleeping on the couch, um, the bed is getting very crowded between us, the pillows, and the cats. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just kind of tough to get comfortable, but getting there, getting there. I read, um, I was doing some research online on, okay, well, how do you deal with this? Like, ah, I can't sleep because the baby's moving. Ah, I can't sleep because my back hurts, my head hurts, my legs asleep. I woke up one night with, like, really bad Charlie horse in one leg to the point where I was like, okay, just stand on it. Gravity will fix it. So I had to get out of bed and stand on it. And basically, like, the only good advice I could find was sleep in different places. Sleep on the couch, sleep in an armchair, sleep, like, on an air mattress. Try all kinds of different sleeping arrangements besides your bed with lots of pillows. So, that's the advice. <laughs> Try and get comfortable any way you can and sleep as long as you can. So, um, and according to, I don't know, whatever, third trimester, Baby Center's third trimester suggestion of things to do, 
it is time to start washing the baby bedding and onesies and sleepers and getting all that stuff ready. So that is on the agenda for this weekend. Um, can you believe we're getting so close that it's like really logistical stuff is starting to happen? Like, wow. Yeah, you probably can, but there are still days when I get dressed in the morning and look at myself at profile in the mirror and go, hmm, I'm pregnant. <laughs> sneaking up on me it's just like I think it's just sinking in a little bit more like this is really gonna happen in seven weeks seven okay in five to nine weeks from now there could be another person in my house like oh my goodness when we go to the grocery store we'll be buying things with that person in mind like yeah I know I know all you mothers out there are like yeah genius we all know this but I'm new it's exciting to me <laughs> so and what else I have been desperately waiting for my uh, nesting phase because I know that's gonna happen like everybody talks about it happening I'm waiting for it to kick in hasn't yet but but I'm ready you know <laughs> like if I'm gonna start washing onesies and setting up the crib and all that let's go come on I want to feel motivated to do that <laughs> so um, and oh, what else? This week we went to, um, we had two classes this week. One was on C-sections and epidurals and the other one was on the amazing newborn. So being studious, I took some notes and let me just tell you what I found interesting in these classes. This is our, uh, baby notebook. So every, every time we have a doctor's appointment or I think of something interesting, I record it in this notebook. So yeah, and we have all the ultrasounds in here and my hospital bag checklist. I still haven't packed that thing. Um, <laughs> but anyways, so this is what he said about the hospital that I'm going to. That from the time you call for an epidural, it will take up to 45 minutes for you to actually feel any relief from it because the doctors aren't on site all the time. Like, yeah, it could be, they, it could be during the day, but if it's 3 in the morning... They've got to drive in, and so that's their, like, at max, it will take 45 minutes, which is like, wow, I better not wait if I want one. I better not wait until I get to the point where I'm like, I need it now. <laughs> um, and that was his point, basically, was like, remember, ladies, it's going to take a little while. Um, let's see. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, I guess that, that that was really all I had for a good note because eight to nine centimeters dilated. They won't. This hospital will not do um, an epidural. They'll do a spinal instead, and anesthesia to, will deal with the pain, and you'll still feel the contractions, but not the pain of them. So that was what he I got out of that not very helpful I know <laughs> but you know they we show we saw a video or a slideshow of um, a c-section from the time the world like every step of the way from the time the woman walked into the hospital till the baby was cleaned and back with the family so that was good to see like this is your hospital this is what's going to happen if you were to have a c-section and he did explain like okay well every baby goes into this heating tray thing at 98 degrees while they clean it up and every baby goes and has this test done and every baby gets that shot and so it was good because it's like okay well c-section that's what would happen but also if not c-section then this is what would happen so it didn't look scary and I only looked away for like two slides but most and that was like the cutting like I could handle the taking out the baby stuff so I'm rather pleased with myself <laughs> And now I, and I think a big part of it is just teaching people, like, the point of the class is, like, this is the position you get into when you get an epidural. So, I know the position. We know what to do. <laughs> um, for the newborn class, here's an amazing thing I didn't realize, uh, which people probably do. So, that was a pediatrician that um, taught that class, which is different, because up to this point, everyone I've seen has been a labor delivery nurse right she's teaching our prepared 
child birthing class, which is the big four-part one on how to breathe and techniques to use relaxation and all that. So either that, my midwives, which are focused on my body and me, not, I mean, they care about the baby, but the baby is not their primary focus, you know? So hearing a pediatrician talk about it's really healthy to go over your due date and every extra ounce of weight that the baby puts on increases its, I don't know, probability of being healthy later on. And she was like, one in 30 of you will induce. And if I could do anything, I would try and stop you from inducing your labor and just let the baby gain weight. It's healthier for the baby. And it was like, oh, wow, thinking about the baby, not about how uncomfortable that poor woman who's two weeks overdue is interesting different perspective so uh she said that we will use 8 to 12 diapers a day <laughs> and she also said 16 is a good day and i was like a good day yeah the baby had lots of activity so it's a good day um she said not to use any of the scented lotions on the baby for the first two months i wouldn't have known this so like the johnson's and johnson's baby lotion the Aveeno lotion, she was like, absolutely not. Um, <clears throat> if the baby has dry skin at all, the best thing to do is to cut back on bathing and let the oils of the skin take care of itself. But if you need to do something, she said, use olive oil. <laughs> she was like, you've got it in your kitchen, go put it on the baby. It's not going to hurt the baby at all. And it's very moisturizing. So something I wouldn't have thought of. Um, she also... Uh, informed us about when the baby sleeps that it should always sleep on its back like put it in the crib on its back but um someone raised their hand and was like yeah but i don't want my kid to have a flat head and she was saying that this technique or not technique but this practice this recommendation has cut down on sudden infant deaths 50 percent in like 10 years because people stop putting babies on their sides or on their stomachs so adamant that we need to put the baby on their back, but if we rotate the crib or rotate the end of the bed, the crib that we put the baby's head at, so if I put it on this side, because he's left-handed, Steve's always going to put it on that side, the baby's eyes will focus on the mobile or the wall decorations in different places in the room, and it'll cause it to turn its head. So that was how you avoid having a flat back of the skull and the other thing she said was like yeah it's great for you to know this but you also need to tell um anyone who's going to come in contact with the baby and potentially put the baby to down for a nap or something which includes like your parents um friends anyone so because the older ones might not know this that you know baby needs to sleep on their back period so i need to tell both grandparents <laughs> Um, or remind them. They probably both already know. But, and she also said that it takes, because a lot of the pictures she was showing of the amazing newborn, like, yeah, oh, it's a cute little baby. It's a cute little baby. Like, none of those babies were. Some of the, like, bumps and stuff, you know, cone heads and things. Okay, those were a little strange, but not nearly as ugly as I thought babies would be <laughs> at first. I'm prepared for a very ugly baby. And then, after a few weeks, it turns into a pretty baby, right? <laughs> so, you know, jaundice and blotchiness and all that stuff. Those babies really didn't look that bad in the pictures. But almost all of them still had this plastic clamp on their umbilical cord. And it was kind of gross looking. <laughs> you know, like you picture a cleaned up, perfect little baby and with a little stump and a clamp. It doesn't look perfect. Um, she said it takes 10 to 14 days for the stump to dry up and fall off. And then the belly button does its own thing. I don't know. Whatever. But, um, yeah. So, good to know because I'm sure I would have found a reason to worry about that. And been like, oh my god, what's going on? Why is this thing still here? And this floppy gross clamp. But that's what I learned about the amazing newborn. <laughs> and, oh. So we're in the class, right? And she makes a point of saying, okay, everybody, you got to pick a pediatrician. How many of you have picked one? And there were probably 20 couples in the class. And so some people put up their hands. We sat in the front, so I didn't 
look around, but I was like, oh, we haven't picked a pediatrician yet. And she said, okay, how many of you have car seats? <gasps> me, me, me. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm a good girl. I've got the car seat. She's like, how many of you have the car seats in the car? And no one put up their hands. <laughs> she was like, all right, you guys, it's great to have car seats, but you need to put them in the car and you need to make sure they're installed correctly. So, um, there is a website that is the Child Safety Seat and Inspection Station location. I will link it to in the show notes. It, I, it's a site that you go to, put in your address, and it gives you all of the places that will install, inspect, make sure, teach you how to use it, like make sure your car seat is in the car correctly. Um, within 10 minutes of my house, it came up with four different places that we can go to. So most, all of them were by appointment only, so you need to call ahead. All of the ones near me anyways. You need to call ahead, set up an appointment, but it's good to know that, you know, someone who knows how these things work will put the car seat in and tell me how to use it appropriately. So we, we plan, we were planning to each take a car and a car seat, because we have two cars, two car seats, and go. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'll be making two trips because he can't drive right now. So we'll see how that goes. But um, I was really excited to find the website. Also, because, God, I can't seem to talk enough about pregnancy. It's a big week. I have been reading this week on my bookshelf or in my bag. I've been reading The Girlfriend's Guide to Surviving the First Year of Motherhood. I know I've talked about it before and I read like maybe 20 pages and put it down. Now I'm really reading it. Um, not sure how practical or useful this book is. Granted, I don't have a newborn with me right now, and so according to her, I am reading ahead. I shouldn't be reading this now, because she does say quite a bit about labor and delivery and what happens afterwards. It's fine. It didn't scare me. I could take it. Um, and she talks a lot about postpartum depression, and I'm sure it will, if my perspective was different it might be more reassuring than I'm finding it but there's some good pieces of information in here um, so far the most useful thing I've read um, is her reminder that you don't have to wear makeup after you have a baby don't worry about wearing makeup but do wear <laughs> eye, eye concealer and lipstick because a lot of pictures will be taken. I know, I'm having a hard time saying this and sounding sincere about it because it seems so fickle and superficial, but I don't know if you can see it. I've got the darkest under eyes you've ever seen. I swear to God, they're black. If if I ever, if you ever saw me without my makeup on, you would be like, what's wrong with you? That was one of Steve's first comments um, when he got back from China. It was like, are you feeling okay? Your eye circles are really dark. So. Okay, I will make sure to put on eye concealer. That's all I will put on. Maybe a little, I don't wear lipstick normally, but um, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I've gotten out of that book so far. I'm about halfway done. So I might feel differently as I move on. I know there's um, stuff about sleeping and food and healthy and second babies. Oh, and she does say like, it takes you nine months to get pregnant. So don't set really high expectations or to give birth. It doesn't take nine months to get pregnant. Um, well, some people it does. Some people it doesn't. Um, so it took you nine months to grow and birth this baby. Don't be surprised if it takes nine months to get your body fully recovered back to where you want it to be. So I was like, oh, well, that's a good thing to realize. Because I guess I thought, you know, oh, you get three months off from work. After three months, you're normal. But maybe not. Not normal. You know what I mean? Oh God, why am I so worried about insulting people today? You're back. Your body's back. Everything's back. But probably not, according to her. Or don't be upset if it isn't. So, that is the baby stuff. Have one more thing. Okay. I'm just... Ah, sorry. Mac was laying on it. Yeah. The, um... Who was telling us? Oh, the epidural guy. The epidural and C-section guy was saying um, birth plans are a great thing to have and, you know, go ahead, write a really detailed birth plan, but understand that in the moment things will change and you might not be able to do exactly what you planned. Granted, I get that. So, and then, like, my weekly email this week from Baby Center was, had a 
baby a birth plan worksheet on it and there are some things on this it's a uh, four pages long that I just found interesting <laughs> that you would detail this that people go to this level of detail on what they want for their ideal birth experience um, so I'm going to read a couple of them to you so one thing is once I'm admitted I'd like my partner to be allowed to stay with me at all times um, another option is I do not want residents medical students or hos other hospital personnel in the room um, I wish to eat <laughs> I would like to stay hydrated by drinking clear fluids those just seem like givens to me like why do I have to sorry my eye itches why do I have to call that out like of course I don't want extra people in the room of course I want him with me of course I want to eat if I'm hungry I don't know so I, it just surprised me that you have to ask to be given clear fluids. Okay. Mm, strange. Okay. And maybe they just want to make sure you have everything covered just in case. Um, yeah, I'd rather have intermittent rather than continuous fetal monitoring. Like, who says that? Don't you want to know what's going on the whole time? I don't understand. Um... I'd like to try all of these positions for pushing, and it gives a, a list of different positions. Sideline, squatting, semi recline Like, aren't you going to try every position possible? Why do you have to say you want to? Why isn't it just a given? I, I, I don't know. Um, and maybe it's because I'm just very open to whatever, which is why I have a midwife, because I want to do this the best way not best but like use every technique I possibly can to move this thing along and I just assume that everyone would want to do that but whatever um oh, <laughs> during delivery I would like to use a mirror to watch the birth I'd like to touch my baby's head as it crowns I would like to room to be as quiet as possible <laughs> I would like to give birth without an episiotomy who walks in and says give me an episiotomy I really don't get this it's just, just like okay <laughs> I want an aerobics class to be taught in the room while I'm giving birth I don't know I just thought it was really funny so in case you can't tell I don't think I'm gonna have a birth plan other than to say yep I want to try and do this natural if I can I want an epidural <laughs> <laughs> anyways so that 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 is now all I have for you on baby stuff and you're probably sick of it and I'm sorry knitters that aren't pregnant that don't care about it but it is getting close and it's starting to take up huge chunks of my brain and my cognitive thought and of course the constant reminder with the kicks and the punches is not helping well it is helping but it's it's putting my head there instead of other places <laughs> so um, what's new with you this week? Well, I can tell you that I ordered some nursing tops <laughs> from Old Navy. Um, I had a gift card and I thought, well, now's a perfectly good time to order some of those funky tops that they don't even look like anything. It's like a V fabric and the one side peels away and they look like, um, there's a piece of fabric in between. Like picture an undershirt right here and then you could pull one side. Anyways, I ordered a few of those and some nursing bras and getting ready. Um, and like I said, I got the buttons for the booties. I haven't sewed them on, but I'm going to. And then I got a little something in the mail because of all my stitch marker searching. Um, my friend Allison, Lucy325 on Ravelry, um, ordered some mooncakes, jewelry, and stitch markers. They're, she's an Etsy seller. Um, let's see, I'll show you that. So she ordered me some stitch markers, and then this is what they look like. I hope you can see that. They're very pretty. Black with like a, an opalescence, um, bead on the end so can't wait to use these they came tied up with a little cute note card and very nicely packaged so 
that came this week. Um, and other than that, I don't have anything new to show you. I showed you the baby blanket, but that's it. Um, I'm not planning to cast on anything new, but who knows how the mood is going to strike me. Right now we have six movies <laughs> to watch because he is, of course, bedridden and full of pain medication, so I need to keep him entertained. So I have a feeling I will be sitting on the other couch keeping him company. So that is it for me. Yeah. Um, I hope you have a great week. And I look forward to seeing you next week when it's week 34. All right. Take care. Bye.